um, and in this sup boarder video I'll be introducing you to white water paddle boarding. I've been paddle boarding now for on white water for four years um, having been a white water kayaker and rafter for a few years prior. I was drawn to this side of white water paddling after seeing some friends out on my local white water spot and decided I really fancied giving it a go. Four years later I'm truly hooked and love being able to push the development of this sport. So what is white water paddle boarding? As one of the newest and most adrenaline filled sub disciplines White water paddleboarding comp combines the technical aspect of stand-up paddleboarding with the high pace and high octane nature of white water. It's normally done on inland waterways, many of which have short sections of either nat natural or man-made rapids. So whether you love the adrenaline and want to try running the biggest rapids, enjoy working on your technical skills on the smaller bits, or fancy trying to learn to do tricks while standing on a wave, there is something in white water sup for everyone. White water sup is a fast, changing environment with many hidden dangers. Therefore, it is advisable to get some coaching and avoid paddling alone. We have some more videos coming out in this series about the right gear, safety equipment and top tips to help you prepare and be safe out on the water. So, where would you start with white water? So, grade one rivers, uh, where the water is moving, there are no rocks or hazards to avoid um, and it's within most people's abilities. If you start learning out on a river or canal, this is going to be where you are. A grade two river is often the start of most people's white water journey. It includes small waves and stoppers, which are fairly easy to navigate. As we progress up towards grade three, things start to get a little bit more technical. There are rocks and underwater obstructions that can form waves, stoppers and small drops, which often require you to pick a distinct line to avoid obstacles and stay on your board. The vast majority of people within white water paddle boarding are working within the grade two and bottom end of grade three remit. However, there are some phenomenal paddleboarders across the world who are really starting to push in towards the grade four rivers. And this has been fantastic to see and it really shows how fast this discipline is going to develop and where it can go. So what sort of things can you do on white water? River running is by far the biggest part of white water sup. This is where paddlers head off and they run sections of rivers. Um, it allows the paddlers to test their skills out on different sections um, rather than running the same stretch of river over and over again. And you can also get to take in some incredible scenery along the way. I'm super lucky to have the National Water Sports Centre in Nottingham on my doorstep, which gives me the perfect training ground to practice multiple times a week and enables me to work on specific skills that I want to perfect before heading out onto a natural river to test my skills. One of the benefits of artificial courses is the limited number of rocks that get in the way, which is especially common out on our British rivers. Um, however, the scenery is definitely not so good. If you're looking to get into river running, most white water sops tending to range from around 8 foot 8 all the way up to 13 foot in length are suitable out on a river. With the length and thickness of these boards varying depending on your size and the river that you're paddling. Personally, I tend to go for a, quite a small board, so I use an 8-8 NRS quiver. Um, for me, it's super nimble and I can turn it really, really quickly when I need to. So another side of white water sup that is really, really big out in the US and Canada and is starting to take off over here in the UK is river surfing. So paddlers tend to find a standing wave on a river that will hold them and their board without requiring to paddle constantly. There are some incredible videos of paddlers across the world mastering 360 degree spins, among other tricks on these waves, which I honestly only thought previously possible in a kayak. Tricks like this tend to be done on smaller boards that are around seven foot and shorter, and with paddlers tending to remove all the fins to make it feel a little bit like you're paddling on a tea tray. I really like my bad fish wavo, which is about six foot two, um, and I tend to run without any sort of anything on the bottom. So the competitive edge of white water sup comes in the form of sup X. This is where multiple paddlers race against each other down a rapid with gates or set lines that they have to take in a race to the finish. It's often a great spectacle and there are always lots of battles going on throughout the race with the winner decided very late on. It's a great opportunity to have some fun and test out your skills whilst also having a little bit of friendly competition in there. One of the biggest misconceptions about whitewater paddleboarding is that you have to be stood up on your board at all times. In fact, and has often been pointed out to me, regardless of whether you're stood up or spread flat out on your stomach, managing to stay on your board looks a lot more impressive than seeing your feet in the air whilst you go flying head first into the water. Therefore, on your first couple of whitewater sup outings, don't be put off if you haven't managed to stand up on the rapids or you spend a lot of time in the water. The best place to start with whitewater sup is getting a lesson by a qualified whitewater instructor. They will be able to give you the best advice and may even have the correct set of kit for you to try out, but crucially they are there to make sure you are safe. 
why WhatsApp is definitely not advisable for complete pattern onboarding beginners. However, it is definitely something that anyone can aim towards. So once you're comfortable on your board and you have some good, a good paddling technique, you'll be well on your way to starting out on your journey in white water surf. White water stand-up paddleboarding is a super fun discipline and there are a lot of different ways to get involved. I'll be bringing you more white water videos in the future with the next video guiding you through the equipment that you will need to get started. Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you out on the water soon.